For details, call 650-856-0978. The community calendar is produced by members of the First Voice Apprenticeship Program. Send your listing at least three weeks in advance to KPFA Box 51, 1929 Martin Luther King Jr. Way in Berkeley, California, 94704. Fax them to 510-848-3812 or email us at calendar at kpfa.org. Tell us if your event is wheelchair accessible. To hear this calendar again, call 510-848-6767, extension 621. This calendar is also online at kpfa.org. You're listening to 94.1 FM KPFA in Berkeley, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFC in Fresno, and online at kpfa.org. It's 701. Up next is Full Circle. Stay with us. Full Circle, yes, we roll. Say it's 360 degrees. Ha, ha, 360 degrees. Ha, ha, 306. 306. 360 degrees. Ha, ha. Welcome to Full Circle, your cultural affairs radio magazine produced by members of the First Voice Media. On the mics tonight, you got El Taino and Felix Lee. Tonight, we dedicate the show to all the women warriors before us that made it possible for us to be here with you tonight. We'll be featuring live performances from Fat Transfer, Mono Web, and Kimberly Jackson and some tunes by my co-host, Felix. Yes. So don't you touch that dial. Keep it locked here on Full Circle 94.1 FM. Good evening, listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tonight, we're bringing you live performances and a conversation about our stories and our artwork. We are people and women of color in the queer community. Let's get right into it. Opening the show tonight is Fat Transfer, a solo project of Tyranny Carter. Originally from West Virginia, a multi-instrumentalist and vocalist, Fat Transfer makes music for the sensitive and the whimsical. A highly sensitive hermit, aspiring witch, and displaced extraterrestrial. Let's listen in.
right, so that song you heard was called I Can Draw a Map by Tierney Carter. Uh, next song. <laughs> What a dream, dream, beautiful music. Thank you so much, Fat Transfer. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, keep your hands together for Mona Webb. Ooh. Welcome, Mona. Welcome, welcome to the studio. Thank you. All right, so Mona's setting up right now. We're about to hear some awesome poetry. Um, in the meantime, let's just welcome our artist um, to the studio. We're really grateful got Mona, Kimberly Jackson, tons of great folks. We're ready when you are, Mona. Okay, this first piece is entitled Mama's Lessons. Cause time keeps on slipping and I keep on living with or without you, I'll be free. Mama says to me, you can do anything with all the intensity in her face and in my six-year-old mind. I believed her with my 10-year-old mind. I began to question, but with my 18-year-old mind, I demanded answers. She says to me, reach for the stars, Ramona. So I reached for the moon. 
and considered Mars, but my fingers could not touch. She says to me, spread your wings and fly, baby. Fly. Fly? I ain't no bird. I ain't got no wings. Fly where? Above similes and metaphors and say what you really feel? Fly above the treetops of change and perch to watch the world go by. Pretend I'm not a poet. See, Mama never lied to me intentionally before, so I began to believe that maybe, just maybe, Mama was living in a dream. A facade, that which only exists in your mind, because apparently she hadn't seen my world in a while. Because the brothers on the blocks don't sell weed and crack rock is the favorite pastime, believe. Prostitutes don't sell their bikes like sex, believe. Women who have abortions because they hate their babies just that much, believe. People don't commit suicide because love wasn't enough. Have faith, Ramona. Faith. You want me to have faith? Mama, you were doing better with belief. Mama, I don't know if you know this or not, but I live in a country built upon miseducation, governmental guides, and I did only see what they want to, and it did not see me. And I'm afraid to say too much. See, I'm an amendment away from being three-fifths of a person and a signature away from voting, being taught to believe in a constitution that never included me. Mama, have you looked out your window lately? There are people walking around with Bin Laden, Bin Living, Too Long logos and T-shirts featuring Bin Laden's face with a target over it. And honestly believe that this too doesn't add to racism. Because see, first I see his face being targeted, and then I see mine. A justification for racial profiling and outright racism. Freedom, Mama, is out of my touch like the moon. You see, I believe my bills will come every month. I believe they will disconnect my stuff and kick me out if I don't pay on time. I used to believe that if I swam in the ocean, I'd be eaten by a shark. To exactly what type of belief are we talking about here, Mama? And she says to me, your struggle is nothing in the presence and greatness of God. 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 Well, Mama, God is the only thing I do believe and put faith in. But, Mama, I didn't just go to church to find God. I found God in my heart, in my soul, in all that is or ever will be. Because for me, Mama, God is love. And, Mama, love is freedom. Thank you, Mama, for teaching me these things. This next piece is entitled Color Complex, and I wrote it for my high school students uh, in the Louisiana lockdown mental health facility who hated everything about themselves that made them black people and wouldn't let go of the N-word. Black girl, black girl, light skin and Negroes. The boys like me, boys like me, they like light, mellow skin tones. It is a light skin girl, all the boys want a bone. And although I think it is a sin for you to want me for the delusion in my skin, light skinned Negroes are in. And to the dark skin, they say, tar baby, yes, tar baby, charcoal black, baby, African booty scratching, baby, yes, anything but black. Yes, I said anything but black. Big lip, big nose, nappy hair, these are the only things that make us black. Yes, these are the only things that make Make us black. See, they say they don't want me to be a white girl, but I done peeped their game. Red bone, caramel cream, light skin, bright skin, yes, anything but black. Yes, I said anything but black. And I listen as women brag. I've got white my family, my whole family, light skin, and the classic. I'm part Indian. Yes, anything but black. Yes, I said anything but black. I never heard black folks claim they part African or say my great great grandmama was Ghanaian. Stay out the sun, they used to tell me you might turn dark brown, baby, and ruin that creamy brown complexion. But to be color struck was taught to me to be my obsession. But being a light skinned Negro ain't nothing to me. Cause when the cops pull me over, a Negro is all they see. There will be no hey, honey, brown, caramel cream, light skin, bright skin. I'm not gonna give you a ticket this time because your skin is diluted with my kind. And I have some kind of cosmic connection. Objection, Negro, get out the car and don't move too fast. I'm gonna blow off ya. So understand this outside of the misfits of black projects. And this outside of the misfits of the black middle class. And this outside of the misfits of the black bourgeoisie being a light-skinned Negro ain't Jack. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mona. This is Full Circle, and I'm El Taino. You just heard the poems of Miss Ramona Webb, a performance artist from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, now living in the Bay Area. Mona is the artistic director of Lyrical Minded 415 and Project ABLE and has been a teaching artist for the last 10 years, stretching from Louisiana, where she co-founded and was president of the Baton Rouge Poetry Alliance for seven years. Ramona is the host, organizer, coach, and slam master of the San Francisco City Slam and experimental mic participant of nine 
National Poetry Slam teams, and an activist performance poem, poet on the national circuit for 15 years. Mona seeks to produce and create new platforms for lyrical creativity, poetry, music, visual art, dance, and all avenues of artistic expression. All right, then. So we're just going to backtrack for a quick second. I want to say that before Mona, we heard uh, Fat Transfer by Tyr- Tyranny Carter. The songs we heard were I Can Draw a Map and Gandalf's Arm. We are moving in to our panel part of the show tonight. Uh, so also in the studio, we have Miss Kimberly Jackson. Kimberly Jackson was born and raised in Los Angeles, California, began classical training at the early age of 12, and continued to master the instrument throughout her formal education. She's a flautist, y'all. It's amazing. At Mills College, um, she graduated and received her master's in music, uh, and she was afforded the opportunity to study under world-renowned classical flautist uh, Angela Corregolos and Priscilla Call. Kimberly has mastered her musical gift from both uh, Bach to hip-hop with ease and musical fluidity. In addition, she's an editor, or an educator, sorry, having taught music and history to elementary school and college students. She's performed on great main stage, including uh, the Apollo Theater and the Concord Pavilion, and uh, also at uh, Yoshi's in Oakland and San Francisco in 2010. Uh, She's also the recipient of a 2011 BMA Black Music Association Jazz Artist of the Year Award. Welcome, Kimberly. Thank you. Welcome, our guests. Welcome, and welcome, Mona. Welcome, Tierney. Okay, so this is the the first part of the panel. We're going into the more personal aspect of what your art is, and so we want to talk about your individual access to art and creative expression when you're growing up as women of color. Uh, What inspires your expression? Whoever wants to start? Someone? Um, I can even start. I'm a musician myself. Actually, I play music, and I write, and uh, music has been a part of my life since I was little. So it's just been integrated. Access is a hard thing to to get as a person of color, but it's what you make for yourself. And uh, if it's just singing, if it's just uh, plucking your little guitar, then then that's where you start. That's where I started. Okay. Um, Kimberly here. Um, you know what? When I was coming up, there was uh, a lot of access to to music. I I started out. My mother told me that. Um, I was conducting an orchestra in front of the TV when I was in diapers. And when I was five years old, um, first grade, I was introduced to the clarinet and um, quickly started studying and got into, we had band and orchestra in the elementary schools that I went to. So I was always in band and orchestra. And um, and then when I I graduated from uh, sixth grade, because we graduated from sixth grade at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to uh, junior high, and I, w- I was playing drums then. And I wanted to, to play drums, continue my drum thing at, in junior high school, but I had an issue with rolling. And so, you know, drum roll. Mm-hmm. And so um, I, I, I couldn't. That was my issue. And so the band teacher said, well, you can't, you can't roll. We can't use a drummer that can't roll. And um, I just made a deal with them, and that's when the, me and the flute, first began our relationship and uh got into band the following semester became first chair in band and orchestra and uh stayed first chair through through junior high and into high school and and into college as well wow so that's I've, i studied privately i went to jazz camps i went to um i was a part of like you know all the all the honor orchestras, all the honor bands, all the you know whatever it was that we could do area D honor symphony orchestra. This was all in L.A. I grew up in Los Angeles, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. So you sorry? Uh, did I say it wrong? No, I mean I, I live in Oakland. I've been in Oakland <laughs> for like you know twenty something years. So I consider it home. Yeah. But I was born in Los Angeles. All right. Yeah. So um, I you know at that time we we didn't understand or or think that that it was special to have access to all of this music education because it was there now i do have to add that my grandmother and my mother made sure that i had private lessons and so they made sacrifices so that i could study flute privately and and just kind of have that little edge but you know so i was a little bit spoiled but you know there it was i share that a little i had trumpet lessons too and okay see yeah, see yeah. Uh, all yeah, right i was in yeah, band for okay. sure okay <laughs> well, what about you mona or Tierney? what's your background um 
in uh, spoken word. I started writing very seriously around high school. Um, and uh, at that time, I was living in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, and um, there were not a lot of outlets for young people, especially young people of color. Um, and uh, I actually got invited to participate in a slam competition at my high school uh, by Pat Storm, a poet who's dead now, but uh, was an amazing influence on me when I was younger and really helped to drag me out. I graduated from the School for the Creative and Performing Arts um, and majoring in creative writing and beginning my organizing career in slam poetry at that time uh, really saved me, kept me from doing or being involved in a lot of other things that other young people were involved in. And Lexington, Kentucky was a very racist um, and very segregated place at that time mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot of hurt and heartache around a lot of racial divides and tension and so I took a lot of my work and used that to kind of bellow my activist movement um, and get more young people involved in it and uh, I've been doing it ever since uh, now I'm not slamming so much anymore but I am coaching and I'm a slam master and I'm very invested in uh, the curation of other artists' aesthetics and the curation of their voice, as I am continuing to do with mine. Um, so, yeah, that really? was my start. Go, Mona. How about you, Fat Transfer? Um, I, th I got started um, uh, mostly, I would write songs in my room around middle school. I had a really bad social anxiety and was just kind of generally introverted um so i think there was a lot um like i had a was kind of an intense inner world and <laughs> it was a, a good place for me to to um like a good outlet for a lot of feelings that i would be having all day just kind of feeling out of place in school um i think that was probably the the big like the reason why I started. So uh, did you start with guitar or how did you start? Um, yeah, I started with guitar and keyboard. Uh, and then I uh, I think I had like a like a small recorder and then picked up a four track along the way and started doing a lot of recordings at home, um, which is a really easy way to to be, a, I think, to be a solo artist. So you can just layer all the sound yourself. And being a shy person, um, it definitely helped. It felt really empowering to be able to just do all the parts myself and not at that time be collaborating with other artists, which would have been really hard for me. Um, so that's, that's, that's yeah. Good. You and I actually share a similarity because we both use looping. And I think it's it's interesting that you touched on being really shy and kind of introverted because that's the way my music starts as well. It's like a very um, self-focused, very healing um, point. It wasn't to share. It wasn't to perform. I just happened to find that when I put these loops together and learned these melodies and tones, it had an effect on my body. And it helped me move through really hard situations. And I just have been developing that as my art. Totally. Yeah. Okay, let's see what's the what else do we have? So what kind of relationship do you have to your art? So I just said mine is the like therapeutic, it's cathartic. Um Kimberly? Well, uh, you know, I was reading that and I said relationship with my art. That's a deep. Um my but you know what? If there's a healing thing because first I do I only do songs that I that I love. And of course, I write material and I produce material in the studio. My music, my relationship with this art, with music, has never been introverted. Although, as a child, I was I was a little shy and and I was always considered kind of weird. My sisters and everybody, you know, they thought you know, put that light skinned thing, the light skinned did it. it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I used to get chased home from school because I was light skinned did it. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, every day. But anyway. Um, my relationship with music is it's it's beautiful it's fun uh i love to perform i've been performing since the diapers again and i took to the stage quite naturally so i love being on stage i love working with you know communicating i talk to my audience i talk to my fans and friends and family kind of they all kind of blend into one and um you know my relationship with my musicians mm -hmm. is that's that's another family mm -hmm. right there um I am definitely speaking and saying something 
to um, to my community, to the people, to my listeners when I, I write. And I usually the the music that definitely influenced me comes comes from the you know the '60s Motown, the '70s funk mm. vibe, um, R and B. That's that's my core. But my degrees, of course, are in in classical flute. I'm, I'm a virtuoso in in that realm. Yes. But my 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 soul is in jazz and funk. I got my you know education in jazz and the after hours clubs. That's how it you goes. Know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Teach that in school. Sneaking into okay. the after hours clubs, right? Yeah, I feel you you know, that. 17 years old with baseball cap on, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. sneaking in, trying to get in and play with the with the real cats. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think you know my desire to push my artistic um, vision really came from community activism and wanting to change the community and the circumstances and the consciousness um, of the people around me. Um, when I moved to Louisiana, I was a teenager and uh, there I met Chancellor Zero Skidmore and we founded the Baton Rouge Poetry Alliance. And uh, I, Initially, the idea was to get 17 performance poets who were willing to try to change the world one poem at a time. And um, We began to uh, hold regular readings and open mics and it became an organization and then it became kind of a movement and um, it was a really beautiful thing and it was a really beautiful time um, and I think we inspired a lot of people we did a lot of things that were contrary um, to uh, the societal uh, norms so to speak um, we didn't uh, isolate or ostracize anyone everyone was welcome uh, to our venues and um, to the stage and I think that is one of the things that has continued um, to drive me is um, in my journey through my art is also the representation of the communities that I come from and the friends that I've lost along the way Mm-hmm. Um, I consider it an honor and a privilege, actually, to be a performance artist in this day and time, especially in California, being a Southern girl. Mm-hmm. Um, this is these are bigger dreams than most of us, you know, come up with or even know are possible uh, when I was growing up. So, uh, yeah, I, I always consider myself, you know, a representation of my community, and I was raised by parents in in academia, but who are also artists. So. Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons that I went into um, arts administration and art-based learning uh, for equity for young people because this is what saved my life and changed my life, and I'd like to see that same transformation in others. All right, share share the wealth share. and the warmth. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We're gonna take a short music break right now with Rita Indiana y los Misteriosos.
Welcome back to the show. You just heard El Judiero by Rita Indiana y Los Misteriosos. Tonight we have Ms. Kimberly Jackson, Mona Webb, Fat Transfer, and Felix Lee. We're talking about our communities and our art. Um, and I'm thinking about what are some of the struggles that we're facing as trans and women of color in a predominantly white art world? Does anybody want to take up that question? Okay. Um, <laughs> because I'm a butch woman, and that's that's where I'm coming. I'm not a trans woman, and I am a butch woman, black woman. And um, for years in my career, I was told you have to. I've told there's a couple of things I was told. You're too pretty to be butch. Um, you, in order to make it in this business, you're gonna have to film up. You're gonna have to wear some dresses. You're gonna have to wear pumps and blah blah blah. And um, I've been doing this for a long time, so I've done all kinds. Of, I've did the pumps and the dresses and everything, and you know that that looked good, but I wasn't happy. And um, and you know it was it was very problematic, and I spent many years very unhappy doing that, and that unhappiness manifested itself in many different ways, including um, addiction and and alcoholism, which I'm very glad to to say is not a part of my life at this point. I'm I'm in recovery. Thank you. But um, what I've found is that as I've become more of my authentic self and more of who I really am, um, my success as a human being as well as an artist is really opening up. I didn't get to start headlining, at, you know, like Yoshi's and um, the Pride Festivals and, and Art and Soul until I really became comfortable with me. And once I was comfortable with me, then I could be comfortable being authentic and really presenting uh, uh, the show that I wanted to present because I wasn't making believe here and then trying to make believe out there and then trying to you know navigate and pumps and play the flute and deal with gloss on the lips and all that and that's a lot if that's not what you want now i love me some films and when they got that on and they doing their thing i'm like yes but now that's you know that's just it's, it's not you but if it's not me right? and it's not me i'm not comfortable like yeah. that so you know we you know i think it's important to be your authentic self and that's that's how i, I work with my students as well I second that as well yeah. you know I I think that so much of my artistic um, vision and career has been founded in this um, idea of diversity and humanity first um, that uh, th that's kind of all I've ever seen. My parents raised me in the South and prepared me very well for going to school in the South. Um, and so they always told me, you have to be twice as good. You need to work twice as hard, you know, um, and don't worry about fair. You worry about doing absolutely your best. And um, uh, there was always this notion that uh, to push to go first. Um, and so that's kind of... That's, how I was raised uh, so I have uh, never really let it get in my way you know I'm from a place where that can get in your way and I I just refuse to um, to to kind of yield to that kind of nonsense um, and continue to try to create diverse uh, spaces for artistic freedom and expression you know as one of the reasons that I do what I do uh, including the San Francisco City Slam second Sundays every month at the luggage store gallery in San Francisco my teams are always very diversely made up um, and uh, I try to curate that kind of environment for other people to experience much appreciated I'm sure I'm Thank sure. You. Tierney, you want to chime in real quick? Come on. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I, I'm a newer performer. I've been recording for a, um, for a while, but I've been playing live for a short amount of time. And um, I, when I was first learning to perform, I would be in kind of predominantly male white spaces. And it was it was really horrible, actually. It was a very, like... Um, uh, like just critical spaces really mm -hmm. kind of abusive and um not a good pl not a very nurturing place to be learning how to perform and then um i've been really blessed to find like queer folk of color spaces to learn how to perform and um and yeah just 
once again, going back to just being a really nervous person, um, I need supportive, nurturing spaces in order to be in front of a bunch of people uh, performing. And so, uh, yeah, that's that was definitely a, a big struggle. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we need we have another music break coming up. I know. Will you introduce this one? This next music break is brought to you by our very own Felix Lee. It's um, a production, a Felix Lee production. Let's take a listen to it. sharing those amazing sounds with us, Felix. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. All right. So uh, this time, this part of the discussion, we're talking about the future. Where do we want to see our work evolve, or how do we want to see our work evolve? Shoot. Um, the ways that I, myself, Mona, would like to see my work evolve are um, I'd like for it to become even more accessible. Um, and I am taking up this um, idea of vision and voice 
and the curation of vision and voice, not only my own, um, but extending that to the larger community. Um, and I would like to see that travel overseas a lot more often. And uh, I'd also like to start focusing uh, a, a concerted effort on my theater work. Um, I write docu-ritual drama theater and have produced several um, productions. And the last one went up in the National Queer Arts Festival, Five Civilized Tribes from the Book of Corin. Um, wow, congrats. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I have a show called New Orleans Anonymous that I would like to continue to work on about my experiences, my ideas around the storm being that I moved here after. And... Um, yeah, I, I want to continue to the journey of creativity, and um, I want to continue that journey in community. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, um, KJ, I definitely want to see my my production company, KJS Entertainment LLC, grow um, to incorporate uh, other artists. Right now, it's my label as well as my production company for live and recorded music. Um, I would love to see, in, with the growth of my production company, um, the completion of my second album project and the inclusion of, of new musicians as well um, in that project, an education process uh, in the community. At this point, I have been blessed to be the recipient of a President's Innovation Fund grant from Skyline Community College, where I'm a professor in the music department. And that's going to enable me to incorporate academic research and creative arts as a way, as a ways and means of presentation for students who use um, the genres of hip-hop, jazz, and funk to discuss their feelings about current events. And that's going to actually happen, the presentation part is going to happen in February during Black History. History Month of what is it 2012? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. Okay, well we and all the other listeners make sure you stay linked in, keep your ears open. I want to hear about it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, Danny, shoot. Um, I'd really like to be able to um, just be able to express more and more emotions and um, especially ones that are um, not discussed very publicly um learn how to <laughs> like what <laughs> like like uncertainty and depression and anxiety and fear and just um and hopelessness and um just g try to create spaces where those feelings can be acknowledged and valued and uh you know and worked through as a i think a form of healing <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. One more thing that, that I would like to see happen within you know our community is that more women, more young women, young girls that are butch and masculine centered um, identify that they feel safe in performing as themselves in their authentic Absolutely. selves as opposed to, I mean, if you're femme, you know, how, I told you how mm -hmm. I feel about that. But <laughs> when, you, when you, you know, if you're butch, that's really discouraged. Mm -hmm. Even today, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's a lot of discouragement. And I want to be one of the, uh, I am one of the artists that encourage young people and old people, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, be who you are, where, whatever it is that you want to express, whether you're a musician, a um, politician, or whatever, especially anytime you're in the public eye, be your authentic self. Absolutely. Because we need that. We True. need a sustainable, safe space, especially on stage. Yeah. Absolutely. And you have to make it because exactly. this is the music business. Exactly. And this is a microcosm of our overall society. So you got to make it. Right. If you don't see the space for yourself, make, make the space for Absolutely. yourself. And with that sentiment, we're going to listen to a Stacey and Chin and Rednecks mashup before we come back to Kimberly's performance. Am I a feminist or a womanist? The student needs to know if I do men occasionally and primarily. Am I a lesbian? Tongue tied up in my cheek, I attempt to respond with some honesty. Well, this business of dykes and dykery, I tell her, is often messy. With social tensions as they are, you never quite know what you're getting. Girls who are only straight at night. Hardcore butches besporting dresses between nine and six every day. Sometimes she is a he trapped by the limitations of our imaginations. Primarily, I tell her, I am concerned about young women who are raped on college campuses, in bars, after poetry readings like this one, in bars. Bruised lips and broken heart, you will forgive her if she does not come forward with the truth 
immediately for when she does. It is she who will stand a trial as damaged goods. Everyone will say she asked for it. Dressed as she was, she must have wanted it. The words will knock about in her head. Harlot, slut, tease, loose woman. Some people cannot handle a woman on the loose. You know those women in pinstripe shirts and still ties. You know those women in blood red stiletto heels and short pink skirts. These women make New York City the most interesting place. And while we're on the subject of diversity, Asia is not one big race. And there is no such country called the islands. And no, I am not from there. There are a hundred ways to slip between the cracks of our not so credible cultural assumptions about race and religion. Most people are surprised that my father is Chinese. Like there's some kind of preconditioned look for the half Chinese lesbian poet who used to be Catholic but now believes in dreams. Let's keep it real, says the boy in the double X hooded sweatshirt. That blonde haired, blue eyed Jesus in the Vatican, are you right? Christ was a Middle Eastern Rastaman who ate grapes in the company of the prostitutes and drank wine more than he drank water. Born of the Spirit, the disciples loved him in the flesh. But the discourse is not on those of us who clearly identify as gay or lesbian or even straight. The state needs us to be a clear left or right. Those in the middle get caught in the cross. Fire away at the other side. If you are not for us, you must be against us. If you are not for us, you must be against us. People get scared enough, they pick a team. But be it for Buddha or Krishna or for Christ, I believe God is that place between belief and what you name it. I believe holy is what you do when there is nothing between your actions and the truth. The truth is, I am afraid to draw black lines around me. I'm not always pale in the middle. I come in too many flavors for one spoon. I am never one thing or the other. At night, I am everything I fear. Tears and sorrows, black windows and muffled screams. In the morning, I am all I ever want to be. Rain and laughter, bare footprints and invisible seams, always without breath or definition. I claim every single dawn, for yesterday is simply what I was, and tomorrow, even that will be gone. Circle in the house. You just heard a mashup inspired by the words of the powerful Miss Stacy Ann Chin and Regnex Be Different. Tonight has been all about our love of art, our love of music. Without further ado, let's put our hands together for Miss Kimberly Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, KJ's in the house. Roll that track. This is a track for my uh, current CD. The title track, actually, is entitled Let Me Make Love to You. You know. Jazz, funk, soul, R&B. Let me make love to you. Only like a woman can. Let me make love to you. I want to make love to you, sugar. I gotta satisfy the need. Let me make love to you, oh baby. I've a hunger only you can be. Let me kiss you up and down your spine. Let me take you beyond the walls of time. I'll yearn to set your spirit free. Your night dreams, complete reality. Just give me a sign. Just a twinkle in your eyes. Got to know. Should I stay or should I go? Let me come up to you. Come on, baby. Only like a woman can. Let 
me make love to you. Oh, darling, yeah. Right this very moment, I want to make love to you. Sugar, I got a satisfying need. Let me make love to you. Ah, oh, baby, I've a hunger only you can be. Let me kiss you up and down your spine. Let me take you. Free. I'll make your night dreams complete reality. Just give me a sign, just a twinkle in your eye. Got to know. Should I stay or should I go? Let me be love to you. Come on, baby, only like a woman can. Let me make love to you, oh darling, yeah. I want to make love to you, you sugar. I got a satisfying need. Let me make love to you, oh darling. I'm a hunger only you can be. What an amazing performance! Thank you, Kimberly. All right, you. you got one more track for us, right? I do Don't leave us hanging. Ah, I do. <laughs> hey, I got a little "Do I Do" uh, oh. Stevie Wonder cover. Yeah, put that on it. I always gotta have a cover, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. You know, funk. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, rolling. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, ready Felix. Yeah. Ready, roll that.
an amazing performance. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for sharing your gift and your passion. So this brings us to the end of tonight's show, and we'd like to leave you with the contact info and upcoming events of our beloved guests uh, who are here with us this evening. So here's what up. Um, you can find Fat Transfer online at fatxxtransfer.com. fatxxtransfer.com. And uh, let's see, Mona Webb, she hosts um, the SF Slam Master. Um, she's got a show on September 11, 2011, and uh, and then every second Sundays at the Luggage Store Gallery. That's 1007 uh, Market Street at 6 in San Francisco. Writers Workshop, 6.30 to 7 p.m. Uh, the show is from 7.30 to 10. Sign up at 7. Uh, free Creole food, all, food, all ages, uh, and a 7 to 10 sliding scale. Uh, Kimberly Jackson and Felix Lee can be found at Reverb Nation and Facebook.com. Kimberly Jackson has performances coming up on July 24th at 7 p.m., Friday, July 29th, um, August 5th, and September 5th. You can find her on Facebook for more information on all of those performances. Okay. So, anyway, tune in next week for Full Circle, 7 p.m., KPFA. Our website is kpfaapprentice.org. You can also check out our archive shows uh, from the past two weeks at kpfa.org slash full circle. Special thanks to our production and technical team, the members of First Voice Media, Group 35, Sumo Sauti, Sumo Angea. We are El Taino, Felix Lee, Carmen, Jen, Irene, Sam the Shaolin, B-Boy, DJ Slim, V-Star, and Tai Chi. Our executive producer is Ms. M. Our technical director is Freewilling Frank. Our intro music is produced by Source of Labor. And our outro music is produced by B. Dontre. And if you have questions or topics for future shows, give us a call at 510-848-6767, extension 627, or send an email to firstvoice at kpfa.org. Like us on Facebook uh, by searching <laughs> for your first voice media, Facebook. I don't know. That might be something to start <laughs> catching on to. Anyway, we're also on Twitter um, at First Voice Media. With Carmen holding down the controls, we've been your hosts. El Taino. And Felix Lee. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Full Circle. Stay tuned for La Onda Bajita. And it is top of the hour. Now